idea. This is Isabel, Autism Untouched. I want to make a short video having a nice coffee break while my son is in school to talk to you about socializing, taking your autistic child out in public. And I know it's it's a challenge, it can be a challenge, but I want to encourage you today to keep doing it. I have decided from the start, after my son was diagnosed with autism at three years old, that even though he was very, very hyperactive, very busy jumping up and down all the time, couldn't sit still, I decided that I'm going to take him out in public. I'm not going to talk to you about how you go about it today. I'll do that in another video, but I want to speak to you about the social aspect and the reason why I want you to take your autistic child out in public to grocery stores, to McDonald's, to church, to wherever you want to take the child. You have to try things. You can't just give up and say it's not working. I have taken my son to all sorts of parades and fairs. In the beginning, when he was between the ages of three and five, it was really hard because he didn't want to be around a lot of people. It made him anxious. When I took him to a mall, he would try to run away. It was really hard. People stare. But you know what? I kept going. I kept trying. And today I can tell you from persevering, taking him out, not being embarrassed by the noises that he's making or the flapping. He can sit at McDonald's in a mall. He can have his Happy Meal and be at peace with himself. And I take him to the bathroom. He's just started going to the men's bathroom on his own. Now I, it was a big step for me. As you all understand, I always used to go with him, being worried that he will lock himself inside the toilet, which he has done. But he has also learned from it and learned how to unlock the door again. So this channel, Autism Untouched, is not for the faint-hearted. It's not for the person that has already decided my child is autistic, my social life is over. No, it's not being cruel to the child, it's being kind to them. Your child deserves to go out in public. He deserves to go to all the other places that neurotypical children go as well. It is not fair to keep that child isolated and at home. I will tell you why I'm saying that. I've seen the effect in society. People don't see special need children much out in public. When they do, they stare and I don't get offended by it. Luckily, I'm very thick skinned. And I greet people friendly. I explain Matthew's um, got autism, but he's, he's actually a cool kid. And you can talk to him. He understands what you're saying. He can't answer you always. Maybe just a short, short syllable now and again. But overall, he loves getting out. Now that he has learned to, to regulate himself, to calm himself, to know that it's okay to be out in a busy mall, or a place like that. We don't go for hours and hours of shopping. We go for, that is how, that's how you do it. I started by taking him for 10 minute shopping trips to the grocery store or department store or take him to, to fit on a pair of shoes. I started taking him to McDonald's. You're going to have to go on regular basis to begin to start and Figure out what it is that works for your child. What I found is for my, for, for my son Matthew, for instance, in the beginning when I took him to McDonald's, he used to, we would get the food and he used to eat for two seconds. He didn't want to sit and eat his food. He wants to go to the play area. So I learned, okay, this is how I do it. When we go to McDonald's, we go to the play area first. I give him a light snack at home. He plays and I use my visual flashcards, which I'll explain to you how it works later in another video. I show him we're going to eat now. When he's finished playing for a bit, it prevents meltdowns from happening. When you are preparing your child, when you go out with him anywhere to a restaurant, I've tried taking my son to the movies, by the way, 
it did not work out but it's not going to stop me from trying i will try again it's everything that i've tried with him if i didn't keep on trying and use other methods and various way of trying things he would have been at home all the time that's not fear it is our job as parents of autistic kids to teach the world out there that they are cool kids they've got a right to have a life an active and productive life as well they are the, the way they learn is by taking them out there and experiencing the world as we live in it not at home where they isolate all the time I get it it's comfortable there's times that I'm tired because he goes to bed later times that I want to just be at home and he's happy to be at home but there's times that I go out and I'll try and include those videos when I take him out especially over school holidays I try and take him out to various places and often and it, it helps him starting to understand for instance I'll tell you two years ago he would not sit in a restaurant or wait for food it would have been a nightmare but I kept trying different things and now we can go to a coffee shop order our food he understands we're waiting for your food. It's important for an autistic child because of their nature that you explain to them what is going to happen next. They like feeling like they're in control. And the other thing that I've done that I want to mention to you is stop worrying what people think. Don't worry if people stare. You are that child's mum. He is in your hands. You need to help him through this life. Other people can stay. The people who normally stay and don't understand, it's because they don't have special needs kids in their families or they've never come across it. Don't judge those people. They just don't understand it. They don't get it. It doesn't matter. Move on from that. I absolutely ignore people who stay or who makes comments. And it has happened to me. People say stupid things because they really are just ignorant. And don't let that put you off from taking your child out again. You've got to develop a thick skin because your child needs you to be bold and to be brave. And on behalf of them, take them out there to help them to get used to this world that they are going to spend the rest of their lives in. They're not going to be in your home forever. And even though we try and put good things in place we have pl plans in place we we try to provide financially for our kids um, the whole idea is I want to inspire you today is you must dream big for your kids don't see your kid as oh maybe somebody in a supermarket will give him a job one day nothing wrong with a supermarket job but don't limit your child's ability don't limit their talents and, and their their skills don't limit the child because the way you perceive that child is the way he's going to grow up if you believe he can't do anything for himself that he is socially awkward we know all these things it, it, it it's a reality they don't know naturally how to socialize like neurotypical kids I know because I've got three neurotypical kids and I've got one autistic child so I know the difference but I'm telling you it is important for you not to be ashamed of your child not to be worried what other people think out there in public because your child deserves to be outside there enjoying the world enjoying everything that every other child is enjoying and you must fight for that sometimes you're gonna have to go home because things get really bad I get that I've been there sometimes things happen and and you go home in tears but you know what you wipe off your tears and you put back get back in the saddle and don't let your child ever see you losing confidence in him let him know when he sees look in your eyes that you he sees joy he sees hope and excitement that he's alive, that he's got potential. That's what he must see in your eyes. Be careful. I'm telling you today that you don't look at your child 
through professionals, therapists, and specialists, other people that give the opinion, look through those eyes at your child, because that's the first mistake you made. If I had to listen to the pediatricians, the specialists, the therapists, about my child and what his capabilities is, he would have been off for the worst because I was told he will be non-verbal the rest of his life. He won't. He's got low muscle tone. He will struggle with writing. My son can write with his left and his right hand. He can cut out stuff with his scissors. He can do puzzles. I'll make videos. I'll show you. I'm telling you, you are his voice. Your autistic child, you need to make sure that if people put your child down, you don't agree with them. I've learned. My child is in a special needs school. When I go to fetch him every day, sometimes a lot of negative feedback comes back. It's not always good, but what do I do with that feedback? I know my child. I don't go ponder on it. The moment I hear it, it's gone. Because I have hope and I have high expectations of my son. And I'm telling you, you will also be surprised the things that your child can do if you give them the chance. Things that they can do for themselves. Don't worry about what other people say. I don't care how many degrees they have. I don't care if they teach your child at school. They are not your child's mother. You are his mother and your words are powerful. Your words is what will have an effect on his life in his future. Just remember that. I'm not saying live in denial. I'm not saying don't listen to advice from professionals. I do listen. I go to my son's IEP meetings. We try and work together as best we can. But it's not the, the end and the beginning for me. I look at my son as an individual. And I look at all the ways that I can help him make progress in this life. And going public with your autistic child is your first step. Don't be scared to do it. You won't be sorry and persevere. I know sometimes you're going to go home and you're going to cry and you are going to feel upset. You might feel frustrated with your child. I've been there. But you know what? You put on the, the kettle. You're going to make you go make yourself a cup of coffee. Dry off your tears and get in in that attitude of positive thinking and hope again. Your child needs that. He needs that to make progress. Thank you for listening. Bye-bye.